Say, it is well with my soul. Every hand needs to go up. If not, you're at the right place. And if your hand went up, you're still at the right place. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to be over Romans chapter 8. We're going to jump around a little bit. We're going to talk about our life's journey. How many is on a journey in life? How many knows what the outcome of your journey in life is going to be? Ultimately, we do, don't we? But does everybody know? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. How many people raises your hand? Man, I know where I'm going. Because he lives within my soul. Amen? Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we go to your word, Lord, I just pray you will reveal to us, Lord, that we have the victory through you. We have the strength through you. We have the hope through you. We have our all in all. It's in you, Lord. And we do not have to hope so, but we know so. And we just thank you for the, the reassurance you give us in, our word, in your word, Lord, that we can know that when we die, we're going to heaven. We have that blessed assurance. So, Joe, Lord, I just pray you'll be with us as we go into your word. Just reveal your word and touch our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And verse uh, 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. You know what that means? What kind of stuff do you read? Carnally minded means to be is death. 
What do you allow into your mind? What do you watch on television? What do you do in your spare time? Carnally minded is death. People, as believers in Jesus Christ, we're not supposed to be carnally minded. We're supposed to be scripturally minded. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. We, his word is the ultimate salvation purpose through his son, Jesus Christ. And it says when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, well, we have the hope in glory. We know that we'll hear them great words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How many has peace here today? Some hands, some not. Okay? The peace that passes all understanding, and there's only one way to get it. It's not in how much money you might get. It's not in the type of food you might eat. It's not in what you might do for a job. The peace that passes all understanding is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We should have peace. We should know the journey that's set before us. And when we look at people, what, is it, what usually happens to our peace? Especially if it's a neighbor or somebody, you go, oh no, not them, not now. Did they have to come to church today? Wow, done messed my whole church service up. But they might be the first one that gets up and comes down and gives their life to the Lord and become our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're to have peace. We're to love people. We're to love them because God knows which way they're going. And until a person makes a profession of faith, he knows. And when they make a profession of faith, he's looking forward to the time that they come home. We are to love people. And spiritually minded is life and peace. How much peace do you have? Is everybody working on peace? Or have you already arrived? Sometimes we can arrive, but yet he even has more and more and more for us that we can, we can know that we know that we know God's got it all in control because we have peace. When our, everything falls down around us, our country is falling apart all the way around us. It's falling apart. Can we have peace? Yes. <coughs> And if things aren't working out right, what do we do? Pray for them. Pray for those who despitefully use you. And drop, drop down to verse 8. For then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're in the flesh, if you're reading magazines you should not read, if you're reading books you should not read, if you're doing things that you should not do, that means you're in the flesh. And you can't please God. I don't care if you come to church every Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and if we have an do open door through the week or a revival and you're there every day of the revival, if you do not have that peace, we cannot please God. So then they that are in the flesh, where are you at today? Are you in the flesh? It's all about me. It's not about you guys. It's all about me. I have the opportunity coming. Lift my Lord and Savior up. No. We are a family of God. Each one is called for a special purpose. And we forget the purpose along the way. And the Bible says, go and tell others about Jesus. Who? Only you know. Only you know when the Holy Spirit says, you go see that person. Share with them. Only you know. And God knows. And if we say no, well, nobody else knows about it, so it's okay. God knows. Who counts more than anyone else? God. The Holy Spirit that lives within us. In verse 10 it says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Right living. Lined up with the Word of God. Are you living the walk that He set before us? Are you listening to them still small voice? That still small voice is charge. It's time to fight them battles. Get them out of your life. Do away with them. Whatever it takes. We should have peace. 
with God. And when we're going through the battle, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and listen and do as he tells you to do. And in verse 13 it says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. And how are you going to die? You're going to die in the flesh. It's all about me. Not about no one else. It's all about me. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. It's in put away old things. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new when we give our Lord, life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so many times you can see people in life's journey they will come and give their life to the Lord. And when they leave, they're a totally different person. Why? Because they surrendered it all to Jesus. Lord, hear my, send me. And the only way he can do that is when he knows your heart, because he already knows your heart, mine, and he knows. But we need to submit, submit, surrender ourselves to him 100%. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God and daughters of God. If you're led by the Spirit, <coughs> the key, led by who? The Spirit. Are you led by the Spirit? And I'm telling you what, you can put a smile on your face and know that God has it all in control because you've heard that voice and you're doing as he called you to do. Peace that passes all understanding. Man, if we could, if everybody would be honest, you, and I would say, everybody has peace that only God can give, and you know everything is just perfect, you know God has it all worked out, and perfect is not when you stumble and fall, because he might have a purpose for it. And you say, well, that wasn't perfect. But while you're there, somebody might come along, can I help you? And that might be the one that you need to share with. We're always talking about the journey. Good, all things work for the good that those that love the Lord. Do you love him? How much? He loved you this much. How much do we love him? Do we love him to get down on our knees and say this much? Do we love him so much we say, Here am I, send me, Lord. We're all commissioned to do the same thing. It, it's not all on a pastor's shoulders. It's not all on the deacon's shoulders. It's on all our shoulders to go and share the gospel of Christ. For the Bible says, sheep beget sheep. One gets the other. You know people that probably would never talk to a pastor, but then what are you called to do? To go out and plant the word of God. Verse 28, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. All of us that sits here today has a purpose. We have a calling on our lives. And when I had a calling to be a minister, man, I way down for many years, I said, Lord, when? 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 And finally one day, through all the things that you would not think it would have happened, at the end of that journey, it happened. What are you looking for in your life? Are we really ready to follow him all the way? And to them who are called according to his purpose. How many had obstacles in the way? God has purpose for everything. And when you realize God has purpose for any everything, when you walk up to certain people, sometimes your, your belly starts rolling and you get shortness of air, hyperventilating, just don't know what to say or what to do. You have a purpose. And if you want to get them out of your face real quick, say, hey, I'd like to invite you to church. And they'll say, okay, I got to go now. I'll talk to you later. Hey, been missing you at church. Oh, got to go now. See you later. We have purpose. And that sounds silly, but 
that silliness of man is what God sometimes uses to touch other people's lives. Well, you're a pastor. You can do anything. You're, you're a pastor. You've got it all figured out. No, I'm a, I'm a witness for Jesus Christ that died for me as we all are. I'm called a pastor, but if it make a difference in outreach and lives being saved, I'm going to say right now, you're all pastors. Go and save the lost. Go and share the word. If that's what it takes, hallelujah. No, it takes a willingness within our own hearts. I could be the worst pastor you ever had, but where is my heart? Where are we? Do we care about people? Jesus did. He died on the cross. Even for Judas that betrayed him. Judas could have went back and said, Jesus, forgive me. I betrayed you. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. What would he have done? He would have forgiven him. It, as far as the east is from the west, he could have been forgiven. We need to be what God has called us to be, and we're all disciples of Jesus Christ. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Take out preach. Go ye into all the world and share the gospel. Take out to share it. Go ye in all to the, all the world and share his word. Do you know John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he died for us? Share be what he's called us to be. He did not call us. I don't want to bust no bubbles. But he did not just call us to come and sit and hear the word on a Sunday and go and live like the devil the rest of the week and then come back on Sunday and start all over again. It's not in the scripture. He loved us and he loves people. We can see what God can do. Isn't that right, my brother back there? We can see what God can do if we only listen to him and realize we are not the judge nor the jury. What, in verse 31, it says, What shall we then say to these saints? If God be for us, who can be against us? Our government is a government against us. Doesn't matter. If God's for us, who can be against us? Nobody. As long as we know who we are in the Lord. God is for his children. And he's called us to what? Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel. Make disciples. We've got to put our eyes on the prize. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And that for me says it all. When we stand before him and we hear that voice, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. That's what it's all about. Do you want to go alone? No. We want to take as many people to heaven as was humanly possible, and we want to see, and they can't go if they don't know Jesus. We can want, wish, pray and everything, but until it's personal, one-on-one -on -one with them, they're still lost. And a lot of people think, well, I go to church every Sunday. It's not going to save you. Well, I drive by the church every Sunday. It's not going to save you either. Well, I walk around this church two times a week, but not on a Sunday. It's not going to save you. Sounds silly, but that's what minds people have. Crazy. He wants a relationship. As we, as a family of God, we have a relationship one with another. And what do we, we want our relationship to grow. Sometimes I've heard along the way people, well, we're just satisfied with the group we have. We're not really interested in more people. And one by one they die and pass away and pretty soon there's, there's one out uh, south of Shelbina. It was down to, I think, two or three, and finally they shut the doors. Older, they just kept passing away, passing away, until finally they shut the doors. Go ye and tell people about Jesus. Invite people to the house of the Lord. 
And as I've said over and over, if you share with somebody, it's, well, I don't, I don't feel like I want to go to Honeywell Mission Church, but I think I'll go to that other church over there in Hannibal. Hallelujah. We've accomplished what we're supposed to do. It doesn't boil down to filling a church up with people. It, feel, it boils down to filling a church up with people that love the Lord and ready to go to battle. And he ready, we're ready for that sound, charge. Go get them. Been through it. Amen. And you've seen the change. You, it, but you saw the change through the battle. You shared with me your testimony, so you're, you're on a hook now because of you sharing with others people's lives was being changed. God never once said it was going to be easy. Not once. He didn't say we wasn't going to have turmoil, but we can still have the peace that passes all understanding because we know that God is in control. Well, Romans... Chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Are you a doer of what God's called us? Did he only call us to come together, forsake not your assembly, self's assembly together with other believers? No, he compelled us to go and tell. And, but we roll it down so small as if we're not the hearers of the law or just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Are you a doer of the law? What's the law? Go, tell, invite, encourage, love, pray for one another. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray for them. Have peace. Do you have peace? When you leave today, tomorrow morning when you get up, are you going to be in turmoil and anguish and, and in pain and everything else? Everything just seems like it's imploding. Instead of us being exploding into a world, we should be shining the light out, but yet we're drawing the darkness in. It does not tell us to do that. Know who you are in the Lord. Romans chapter 11 verse 25 it says for I would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of, the, of this mystery lest ye should be lest ye should be wise in your own conceit that blindness in, in part is happened to Israel unto the fullness of the Gentiles become in Sounds like a lot. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. What is the mystery? We are the mystery. You realize that? We are the mysteries. You see how so? When Paul came on its scene, after he saw that bright light, who did he go to to preach the gospel? The Gentiles. What are we? Gentiles. It's a mystery. God loved Israel. But yet they turned their backs on him, and so he turned his eyes upon the Gentiles. I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Least ye should be wise in your own conceit, on your own opinion. Sometimes we get wise on our own opinion. My opinion is, but what does the word say? No, my opinion is, it never said once, what is your opinion? But what does a word of God say? If I'm up here sharing my opinion week after week, I guarantee you one thing. You need to fire this man. Don't leave. Just fire this man and get somebody that's going to preach the word of God. Not an opinion. He says that blindness in part has happened to Israel. When Israel turned their backs on Jesus Christ and when they crucified him, God turned his attention through Paul to the Gentiles us and they're still going through the turmoil maybe not as severe i don't know but they're still going through the turmoil that jesus has already been here israel the ones that really in depth into their own word 
They do not believe that Jesus has come yet. They do not believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross. They believe Jesus Christ, when he comes back, he's going to come back in the sky. They miss the mark. And why did they go through 2,000, 1,500, about 1,500 years of turmoil and everything? Because they crucified Jesus Christ and they said he was not the Son of God. He was just a man and they crucified him. And God took his attention off Israel and put it on the Gentiles. And he took one of the highest ranking officials, Paul, of the Gentiles that was leading the ones that was doing all these things, he was going around crucifying and ki not crucifying, but killing and throwing them in jail because they was Gentiles throwing them in jail until he saw the light. And when he saw the light, God told him, who are you to do such a thing? And he turned his eyes to Jesus and realized that God died for the Gentiles too. And because of that time and place, we had the opportunity to be the children of God, to make Israel jealous. And they're just now, if you listen to the news much, they're just now starting to have revivals of what Jesus is doing over in the Middle East. And God says, this land is theirs, and he would make sure they get it back, and they got it back. And why do you think the world was so mad at the United States of America when the president went over there and set up the, the UN, not the UN, the ambassador for Israel right there as a state? We're living in the last days. What would you do? If, it, if he come today. Are you ready? Do you know? He says, till the fullness of the Gentiles become in. The fullness of the Gentile, and I believe we're at that stage or maybe even past. For now, we're rebelling as a nation, one nation under God, free for anybody to come in, to be a United States citizen. And what are we doing? We're turning it upside down. It says, until, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And I believe we are in the fullness of the Gentiles. And now it's all about us and not about God. We've turned our eyes off. We took our eyes off God, turn our backs on God. People, we say all the time, get right church and let's go home. It's time for revival individually. Individually, each and every one of us to realize that we do not know the day nor the hour. The question always is the same. Are you ready if it was right now? If I was to snap my finger and life would be over, are you ready? to stand before your judge? Are you ready to stand before Jesus? And what will he say? One of two things. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, for I knew you not, or enter into your rest as his child. Where are you in your journey? Galatians 2, 20. The last one. I am crucified with Christ. Are you crucified with Christ? When you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you submit yourself. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live in this flesh. I live, but I've been crucified with Christ because I give my heart to him. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Is Christ living in you? And the words that come out of your mouth, are they pleasing to God? Do you have a vocabulary that you, don't, you do not even mind your little children to listen? What comes out of your mouth? Do you use God's name in vain? What comes out of your mouth? And I'm telling you, when you get mad, when you hurt yourself, 
When something's going wrong, you do not have to use God's name in vain. I guarantee you, you do not have to use God's name in vain. Went through a lot of stuff. Went through a lot. Never once used God's name in vain. Had a lot of people. They didn't like me because of who I am. Never use God's name in vain. God loves us. He says, In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see how personal it is? One-on-one -on -one with God through Jesus Christ. He died for you. He died for me. Personal. You did we all know it was a whole world. Personal. Because on that day when we when we get to heaven, each and every one of us is going to be one on one. I don't know how it's laid out, don't know, but we're going to hear that. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Do you know him that well? Do you know him so well that when a storm cloud comes, you just look up and say, Praise the Lord. I know he's going to cuss me out. Praise the Lord. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me strength to speak your love. You want to see a world change? Let this body of believers change, and we'll see a world change. As I've said over and over again, it's not about filling a church up. It's about sharing Jesus Christ and having them go wherever they feel led to go to share the gospel. If we all stayed right here, we just kept building bigger and bigger and bigger, we're not touching a lost world. Go and tell about Jesus if he's real to you. If he's not real to you, zip it. Why? Why would you say that? Because if he's not real to you and you're sharing with somebody, come to church and then next week you're mad, stomping, screaming, cussing and spitting and carrying on and hating this one, hating that one. Church doesn't need that. We're to love those who despitefully use us. It's time for a change in our lives. Shall we all stand? And the Bible says it's in Jesus Christ that all nations would be blessed. But without Jesus, we are lost. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we open the altar, Lord, I just pray that if there's any here that just just wondering, don't know for sure, or, or just want to make sure, or whatever the case may be, Lord, the altar is open, always open. I just pray you'll touch our hearts that we can be what you call us to be, a witness in a lost world, to go and tell about your love, of what you mean to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.